come in the midst of the discussion about cheating in video games. The botters are apparently being banned in Diablo 3. Oh, yeah, baby. And I didn't know what they were botting because the real money auction house is gone. Like, what are you botting in that game? Uh, apparently, they're botting their ways to the top of the leaderboards. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Look at my undeserved ranking on the leaderboard. Chaps, aren't I the shit? I didn't play the game. But I got my name up there. <laughs> yes! Nailed it! Absolutely nailed it! And my god, what a week it has been with so many streams. I actually checked with Andy, and what's what I'll throw it out there is that we smashed our all time Twitch sub record by over 200 subs in the last two days. That's pretty fucking ridiculous. Thank you all, man. Thank you all for what has been an extendedly amazingly fun venture through the battle for azeroth which uh is turning out to be really great in some areas and a little weird in some other areas which uh we'll be looking into in some more in-depth videos that not many people want to hear soon so the more niche stuff is on its way which is why we have twitch subs and patreon and things like that so we'll be doing all those things uh that annoy the clash the the more casual player base whatever the hell you want to term that in the next few days we'll be looking into that so and seeing what's going there but so far wonderful world can't deny it wonderful fucking world so far wonderful world and we love all the frog people and the turtle people they're our friends you thought vulpira were the cutest things in battle for azeroth wrong wrong it's all about the Tartolans. I want to call them the Tartolans. Tartolans. The Tartolans are now the number one choice for the next allied race. That's what they are. That's what they are. They are the absolute number one. Not only have we had all this great, wonderful success, including the Legacy of the Priest, but that we've rattled some cages amongst the girls with drama time. We have rattled some cages amongst the girls with drama time because a, a couple of weeks ago we had a story that came in that involved creepers. <laughs> creepers, creepers being creepy. You might remember such thing as asterisk kisses, asterisk. The girls are rattled because they're like, oh, are we doing this? Because fucking have I got some stories for you. Have I got some stories for you. So today's drama time, drama time is entitled the creepers <laughs> are you ready to get creepy with me are you ready to get creepy with me because we're going to get real creepy real creepy uh okay <laughs> my creeper <laughs> we're calling this my cre i love creepers they're the best aren't they we always feel better about ourselves when we find out what the creepers have been up to uh okay we need a creeper who will be who do I recognize here from the drama names? I think we're going to have to go with Beer Bearded. <laughs> My man. My man. Our creeper. Our creeper. Our creeper indeed. Our resident creeper himself. Our resident creeper himself. <laughs> he's our man he's our you're the best creeper you guys are so well attached to the creeper you really are genuinely very well attached to the creeper okay there are only two people in this story myself and beer bearded hello preacher your chat and of course mr ghost what it do a cuz uh yeah that works for girls girls can be cousins girls too. can be cuz mate hey cuz, fam that's what 100 years of voting will get you. Right? I, exactly. I, I, I love it. Equal opportunities. You two can be a cousin. Purveyor and deliverer of sandwiches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fine sandwiches. Yeah. Cock pockets. Cock pockets. And, of course, ham wallets. Mmm. <laughs> my wife brought me a chicken sandwich before. It's very nice and spicy. This is back when I was on worm rest accord with my monk. I was relaxing in Stormwind, just at the entrance gate as my character was in character waiting for a date. Ladies and gentlemen, we're RPing. Parentheses, my date never came. Stood up in game. Stood up in game. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got stood up. Who's standing up a girl, an IRL girl, in game? <laughs> Were you too nervous? Did you not dress right? Bad bock. What is it? Because it can't be anything really other than you turned down a real life girl day in game. While that was happening, a message in trade chat caught my attention. Now we need a, we need our voice. He's not creepy yet. Can a druid whisper me, please? Being the naive little monk I was, I messaged them. They didn't know. You ready? They didn't know where the artifact forge for the druid was. How? I don't know. It's not like it's obvious or anything. <laughs> to be fair, the druid one is kind of set back a bit. <laughs> to be fair, the druid one is kind of set back a little bit. It is. Now, you know, I know what you're going to say is that it tells you where to go the first time you get there. But there you go. Yeah, <laughs> but it is kind of set back. If you rushed through the, the questing period, maybe you forgot where it is. Since I was maining a druid on the US server of Nordrassil, I decided to help them by explaining where it was. And of course, I expected this to be the end of our conversation. But Beer Bearded, of course, has different plans. Hey, thanks. Say, you're really nice. Want to chat? Unfortunately, since I was naive and I had been stood up by my in-game date... I said, sure. I mean, she's all dressed up with nowhere to go. Right? All dressed up. We know she had Skype plans. There was ERP on the cards. They were going for a nice dinner. And Stormwind, no less. One of the fancy ones. RPers, can I ask you a question that's just occurred to me? Is that considered to be a fancier part of Stormwind and like a poorer side of Stormwind? That like if it's a really good date, you go to a certain quarter or something? But if she's like, if it's like a one night stand, you go to like the Dwarven Quarter or something. Is there a thing like that? What do you mean, like a dirty dumpster that you can fucking be at? Well, I'm just saying, is there like a McDonald's area and the posh Italian area? No. <laughs> You're thinking of the classic sort of class, and I'm thinking of like, is it like a back alley? Yeah, not a back alley. I'm just saying you're taking your date out. The dwarf is the slums. So if it's a first date, do you go to the dwarven district? Where do you go on like a third date? Like the royal quarter? Shit. Take her to the tram. <laughs> Finger blaster, Finger blaster, the blaster in the tram. If you want to give her that authentic UK experience. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Oh my God. That's really good. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. Immersion. Cue about an hour of chatting where I lied about pretty much everything I told him, except my interest in becoming a writer. For some reason, Beer Beard this found this to be like the second coming of Christ. <laughs> it was like I had told him the secret of the universe. I started to grow suspicious. By this time, Beer Bearded had asked where I live, how old I am, if I was in school, if I worked, if I had siblings. I felt like I was being questioned, which I really, really was. And then, of course, came the line that we all fear. Are you single? I really like you. And then he said the weirdest thing anyone's ever said to me as a come online. I feel interested in you. Now, on reflection, <coughs> on reflection, bear bearded, that sounds like something somebody who cuts skin off people says. <laughs> 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 it sounds like you would definitely wear this girl like a hat. Uh, but anyway, I groaned out loud. I have been on the roller coaster of relationships before. Never again. Mm, you were sighting Stormwind wearing for a date. I think you were open to a second chance. You just didn't like the way he was going about it. I think you'd be up for an relationship. Why else would you be going on a date? I'm just saying. I replied with a polite, Sorry. I am not interested in dating right now. Beer Bearded's reply to this, polite no. But I am interested though. I think we should see how it goes. Now, okay. 
<laughs> the no is the end. Would you like to go out? No? Well, okay then. No. Well, I would like to go out, so we should go out. Right? That's not how it works. <laughs> would you like to go out? No. Well, I do. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As if you somehow reopened the door. <coughs> By this time, I wanted to throw my computer into the ocean. I was hungry, annoyed, impatient. I typed in a clear message, no. That somehow got interpreted as, please talk to me more. <laughs> he sent me a battle tag. I declined. He thought it was a misclick and considered to send them. There was no escape. I accepted it, planning to remove him when he went offline. Ah, you see, you can't do these moves just to get it to stop because this is how you drag the creepers out i know what you're thinking fine stop spamming me i'll fucking accept it and remove you later right that doesn't fucking work you've got to be persistent <laughs> listen to yeho no just keep just keep spamming you'll get there now cringe faces at the ready <clears throat> he messaged me again I guess I'm now officially your suitor then. Andy, will you be will you be my suitor? What's a suitor? <laughs> a what? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> we're, we're a suitor. We're setting out for dating. Yeah. So like a boyfriend. You're like a fine suitor. For you to go on a date with. <laughs> What the fuck's a sewer? <laughs> I can't believe these people are real. They're very real. He's trying to appear gentlemanly. All right. Yeah? He's trying to be a gentleman about it. Milady. Exactly. Milady. I was done as I saw this. Some part of my inner literature nerd joked about me being the reincarnation of Penelope, only as a 17 year old girl who was about to drink bleach. Okay, I replied. <laughs> after five minutes of contemplating my existence <laughs> okay <laughs> i actually forgot to remove him that day horribly you see i think you were into him i think he had some fucking pizzazz about him i think the way i think that suitor comment swayed you it made your fucking loins burn with envy <laughs> you were into it the next day he whispered me as i was doing world quests hello do you have Discord? I considered deleting my Discord when this popped up. <laughs> no, sorry, I have no use for it. It was a lie. I used it to raid with my guild. Facebook? No. I do have one. I just don't use it because I like having to see 500 pictures of pointless things. Snapchat? No. Instagram? No. Oh, you should get Facebook. Here's my Facebook. You can check me out now. And I did. And all oh my tits, my eyes died. Now, imagine a neckbeard. No fedora, but what appeared to be a sun hat. Heavy. A lot of acne. A captain's shirt. Like a boat captain. This was his profile picture. And handsome aren't I. As a caption. Below the picture. Now. <laughs> I don't know where you buy a captain's shirt. But I want one. <laughs> I want a captain. I want a captain's shirt and a sun hat. I'm handsome. I'm handsome as fuck. You know. I like it. I like it. He's got a theme going. It's a theme profile picture. He's an RPA. Right? He's an RPA. <laughs> Ahoy, sailor. Now, I'm a good person. So I didn't message him back with a dead a dead squirrel. Okay, she's, she's clearly thought on these insults. Sorry if this is you, by the way, and you recognize this. But <clears throat> here we go. There aren't that many people with captain shirt, Facebook pictures, and sun hats on. Um, and a caption. What made you put a caption on your profile picture, by the way, saying that you're handsome? 
Like, at which point was that like, I need to do this, otherwise people might get confused. <laughs> if I don't tell them I'm handsome, they might not know. So I should tell them. I should put a caption. <laughs> <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so i didn't reply back with a dead squirrel has more class than you with that dumb ass hat and your pepperoni ass <laughs> what's a pepperoni ass dimples is that a dimply butt pepperoni ass oh maybe it's like uh sort of like red blemished ass kind of like i don't think she saw his ass but it may have been because he's got a blotchy ass maybe Maybe if I had less of a soul, I would have sent him that message. You're fine, I said. <laughs> oh my god, you're fine. <laughs> Do you think I'm good looking? You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. That's cold as fuck. <laughs> you're just fine. <laughs> That's so fucking cold. <laughs> oh my god. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> wow! Exclamation mark said beer bearded. Nice! Most girls are rude and call me ugly. <laughs> oh my god, he's in love. Oh shit. <laughs> You're supposed to tell him the truth. Oh, man. Nobody's ever caught me just fine before. <laughs> She's the one. <laughs> uh, oh, God. <clears throat> I wonder why I thought. Could it be that that hat belongs in a dumpster to get nuked by North Korea? Of course not. Let's move on to the next day. When he finally pushed me off the edge. <laughs> I'm going to pre-warn the chat of what he types because it includes a smiley face. <laughs> Just so the timing's right. <clears throat> so, what kind of fetishes do you have? Smiley face. <laughs> smiley face. What are you into? <laughs> Let me know what you... Let's just... Br Let's get down to brass tacks. I mean, you already think I'm kind of fine looking. So what's your fetish? I didn't reply for a time. I was banging my head against the door, screaming about how much I hated myself for getting into this. But when I came back, I replied with... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Whatever, you know. <laughs> Beer bearded though, not to be up, not to be put off. Well, dot 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 dot. Well, how about we find how soon? Cat eyes. I think this is cat eyes. It's the uh, yeah, it's the cat eyes, right? This is cat face. I think. I think it's cat face. Confirmed denied for me, chat. This is cat face. I think it's cat face. That one's cat face, right? Captains are my fetish. I fucking love boats. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I fucking love boats, dude. I love them. No thanks, and I logged out. I took a shower and generally debated on moving to Alaska in, in case Beer Bearded tried to come and find me, which he probably would. I came back after my shower to find out he was offline. Immediately, I removed him from the battle swag, thanking the Spaghetti Lord for the one time he wasn't online. And so here we are, months later. I never heard from Beer Bearded. Would that be because I moved realm? <laughs> she moved realm with my guild. Now I main tank a monk, and yes... Oh, no, now I main a monk, and yes, I'm a healer. Yes, I'm a girl, and I happily embarrass people in PvP. Smiley face. Cocky little DPSs with silly little cooldowns and no match for my little monk. All those attempts to kill me fuel my dead soul. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> are you, are you, are you, you're a little edgy, aren't you? 
she's got PvP on the brain, and she's fueled her to dead soul. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> as do your salty whispers. Anyway, my guild and I are making steady progress in Heroic Ansaurus. Well, not steady progress. We're stuck on Coven. Expect another story time from me if it breaks the guild. Thank you for reading my little story. And remember, ladies, when someone in trade asks a question and you decide to reply, be very careful. They might just become your suitor. <laughs> it's a good one. Beer bearded. You sound like a fine suitor, actually. You sounded like a fine suitor, and I would happy. I would happy. I would be happy to take you on. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do like the creepers. Oh. What movie exists anywhere where somebody tried these plays and it worked? Like, <laughs> where was your example? <laughs> where did you go? Oh, it worked for that guy. That. Yeah. Where did you see it and be like, there's no written word, paragraph anywhere where any dude, of these plays worked? If you could be a dude to a chick in a film, who would you want to be? Bradley Cooper in Limitless. Nice. Mm. Good pick. Good pick. Just Bradley Cooper generally in any movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a movie that exists that Bradley Cooper doesn't get his dick wet. Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, to the furries, I guess. There you go. Full pair. And go. we've come full circle. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, okay. So there's a few characters in this one. Here we go. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's the creeper. So some some lucky guy is gonna get to be the creeper. Right, we need uh, a female Drenai priest. Rocking. That can be. Uh, let's go with mm, Nalsinki. It's kind of male, but it can also pass as female. Uh, another girl. Fucking hell. We'll go with Quill because she's spiky. Mm. My best girl. Fucking hell. You girls with all your girlfriends. Jesus. Would like... Plura. Plura works. You're lucky. There's plenty of ladies on our fucking Patreon. You go, girls. Oh, that's the creeper. Okay. Our creeper shall be... Nat Shep. Yeah, buddy. Okay. <laughs> An officer slut. <laughs> Jesus. We need a guild name, everybody. I need another girl. Uh, <laughs> we'll go with uh, McGrank. McGrank the Skank. There we go. McGrank the Skank. That works. McGrank the Skank. Okay, well, just look right here, jump to. The Cock Twisters. We're in. <laughs> the guild should be called the Cock Twisters. The Cock Twisters it is. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Arcanon Poros. Oh, that's nice. It's from a lady, though. Nerd. That's nice. Nerd. Hey, she looks a bit of RP, that bitch. <laughs> Arkanoboros, preacher and ghosty. I've been listening to your stuff for a while now, and as a straight white female from Norway. That's that Viking shit, yo. That's what I'm talking about. Got that about, fucking man. helmet on and that hammer. Exactly. Boom, she baby. She took you off with her ass cheeks. Fucking quality. Solid. Boom. I feel compelled to share this old story with you. That I've had problems writing for ages now because I suck at writing. That's cool. Don't worry about sucking at writing. You know what's worse than sucking at writing? Not writing anything. Definitely not going to read that. Just telling you. So anyway, we're going back to 2010. I had wandered into a random store that had the Burning Crusade for sale. As a girl, people always cringe when I told them I enjoyed games. I've been playing Warcraft 3 for years and had held myself back from playing WoW, mostly because I was scared of becoming addicted like so many before me. Nonetheless, I picked up TBC and bought it. It would still take me some months before I decided to start installing the game. From time to time, I would spend hours painting pictures and glance over at the box next to my computer. Oh my god, some fucking romanticized as fuck in it. While she was painting the old Mona Lisa. It was a glorious day in December that I decided to install it. Of course, buying everything else all up to Katar and waited as long as installing and updating. It was a world of magic, I tell you. As I decided to roll a Draenei mage, yes, not a blood elf priest. Yeah, everyone makes mistakes the first time. It's fine. It's all right. Can't expect to win the Olympics on your first run, you know? 
on a what I got to know as a dead RP PvP realm. The beautiful world I just stepped into with the soothing calm music of Armand Vale was almost more than my mind could handle. With the beautiful colours and animations, it was more than I ever imagined WoW would ever be. And that's when it ticked. <clears throat> RP voice time. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tell me you guys would not join this guild. <clears throat> Hello, fellow adventurer. We see you just wandered out in the open and are now on your way to higher levels. But would you do so all alone? Would you? Why won't you join us all in the glorious level 25 guild, the Cock Twisters, with all perks at your disposal, as well as guild repairs and materials in the bank? We're in, right? We're sold. We're sold as fuck. Ain't nobody saying no to that. Macro or otherwise, we're in. We're totally in. We love it. Who could say no to such fantastic words, such words of glory? I accepted and soon found myself in my first and last guild that I would ever join. Oh, no, you're not. Well, no, no, no. Try again. I don't know. <laughs> Try again. Guilds are fine, right? <laughs> it's all good. I was always a shy girl at my then 20 years of age. Without me knowing, I was also having some social anxiety and various problems, making me an easy target for harassment, as I normally just accepted it. This information will make sense later in the story. It turned out to be a social guild. Yes. There was plenty of likable souls. I soon became friendly with four of the officers and three of the other members in no time. Our GM had the roster full of alts. And he never seemed to be able what to decide what character to bring to raids. Me being the noob I was, used the guild to hoard all the information I could about the game while leveling my mage and exploring the beauty of Azeroth and all of the beautiful areas I recognized from Warcraft 3. While I was around level 57, another character joined the guild, a level 85 warlock. Normally I went into my little shell whenever new people joined the guild, but this person was special. They always talked about things I enjoy, like art and other creative stuff. After a week of watching the strange warlock talk, I piped up on the subject of Da Vinci, and we hit it off. If there is one thing I learned quickly in this game back in Kata is that you never tell anyone that you have a vagina. But this person found out on their own. I soon found out why. She also had a vagina. Actually, a rather mature vagina. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> and she had noticed something disturbing in the guild already. You see, who was the creeper? Nat Shep. And his most precious officer. Oh, that was the main girl. I think it's McGrank. <laughs> Nat Shep and his most precious officer, McGrank, were constantly openly flirting in the chat. Something I just thought was normal. But she had found out more. Nat Shep was actually married IRL. And was openly flirting with the 60-year-old McGrank, who he had promoted to officer. <laughs> I bet these old ladies fucking love it, don't you? Don't you reckon, though? They fucking love it, these old birds. They get on wow. Got it, got it's like 60. Husbands probably left or whatever, you know what I mean? We, we all us husbands die at like forty-five anyway, right? And uh, there's all these young lads <laughs> talking all this dirty shit. And fucking well good. I bet they fucking love it. <coughs> Just because of the fact that she let him flirt with her, and that she had shared nudes of herself. <laughs> oh no! I have lifted. <laughs> Some of you know this, but there was a day that I had to break into my grandmother's home. I had to smash the door down. And she had been stuck in the bath for a day and a half. And I had to lift her naked body out of the bath, right? <laughs> and carry her into the bedroom. <laughs> you don't want to see that shit. Not until you're that old. <laughs> not until you're that old. You don't need to see that shit, man. It's not the best. But anyway... She's sharing noobs. Oh, she's, she was fine. She's dead now, though. But that wasn't related. It was many years ago. It was an unrelated situation. 
<clears throat> but I'm just saying. Although I think she was about, ooh, she might have been 90. She might have been 90, but maybe in the 90s. You should have made it awkward and started singing <laughs> uh, Hero by Enrique Iglesias as you were doing it. She made it awkward. Did you know what she said to me? She's totally naked. Right. She's in my arms, so I've got an arm under her back and an arm under her legs. So this vag is central to my vision. And you know what she said? What? You're so strong, Mike. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like the worst moment of my life. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> hey, old ladies don't give a fuck, man. She's not asked if she's naked. She's fucking like 90 years old. She don't give a shit. <laughs> she don't give a fuck. She lived through a war, dude. She's not asked. This, of course, scared me a bit. <clears throat> But from there, uh, me and I think this is Plora. I think Plora is the, is the the art lady. Me and Plora formed a tight bond. She would often come and help me if I got stuck anywhere. And before I knew it, I was eighty five, like the rest of the unpopular people. The rest of the popular people. Everyone in the guild congratulated me on my capping success, especially Nat Shep. He soon whispered me as I was portaling back to Stormwind from Mount Hyjar. Congrats, kid. I knew you could do it. Me being the skeptical person I was, simply said, thanks. Since you seem like such a great person, I wanted to invite you to a Firelands run this evening. This was shocking news to me. I had heard about raiding and that you needed some sort of decent gear to do it. So I said, I, I just capped. I haven't got any gear. No problem. Me... I need the next person. Quill and McGrank will boost you through heroics till raid time. What a guy. Well, this is what social guild's all about, dude. This is what it's all about, man. This is what it's good. I was both flattered and a bit relieved at this point as he showed no sign of knowing my real gender and seemed to just want to help newbies out. So I agreed. And this is when the nightmare started. <laughs> I'm going to send you the info you need to join our team speak. My blood froze. My heart skipped a beat and my eyes widened in horror. I had installed team speak ages ago because me and my brother played another game together and we preferred using that instead of Skype. I instantly answered. I don't have a mic. No mic. No, no mic. No mic. Bad touch. Bad touch. No mic. I waited for his answer. That's okay. You just need to be able to listen. So you can understand tactics. I felt so relieved. As we were soon running heroic dungeons en masse. My first impressions of Quill. Was the raid, who was the raid leader back then. Is that he was a total elitist douche. <laughs> but I would soon soften up to the guy. <laughs> the first run in Firelands went nicely. With only a couple of wipes. There were other people on the raiding team. Who didn't speak during raids. Making me much more comfortable. Ah, there's lots of people not talking. But we all got to be constant witnesses. <sighs> to McGrank and Nat Shep's disgusting flirting over TeamSpeak, as we now got to experience it vocally. Quill soon suggested that I should become a member of the weekly raiding team. Nat Shep agreed to this, and I was promoted to member without answering the question. And this is where things became a little weird. You see, me unknowingly having some problems had a little bit of OCD about me. And the guild bank was a mess. I, at times, would spend hours upon hours moving things around in the guild bank, setting up tabs for mats, gear, and such. And after a couple of months with this, I got the nickname of the cleaner. <laughs> I would often go into random rages in the guild chat about people messing up my guild bank work. <coughs> Plura, of course, being the bitch she was, would uh, would refer to me only this after joining the raiding team as well. By then, no one was expecting me to say a word anymore, and I had joined the group of the creepy listener, as we were called. People who didn't have a mic, but listened in raids. Now, Nat Shep's complete altaism had rubbed off on me as well. I wanted to experience all the classes, and I had switched out my mage for a Draenei Dis Priest. Told you. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> uh, 
What was the friend called? Uh, it was... Oh, yeah, Plura. <laughs> Something Plura had been openly criticised for as long as I had been max level. Her being holy and now was forced to share her roles with me and often losing. Now, I've been in, I had been in this guild for ages and Dragon Soul had just opened up. Raid night was coming up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plura and McGrank were the only people... Oh, no. Plura and Nalsinki. Poor and Nalsinki were the only people who knew I was, in fact, a girl. But they were keeping my gender secret. As we cleared the trash. Sorry, these names are really hard to follow. Quill. Yeah, Quill was acting, as usual, a bitch and throwing shade my way. I ignored it. Morchok stood in front of us, towering as the huge stone brute that he is. Crystal crystal emanating from his shoulders quill was busy telling us the tactics dividing us into groups for when we did the split when of course plora piped up are you sure you can trust arthur alone you know he might end up tripping on his fat hooves and anally rape the tank with his tail i mean that just came out of nowhere what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> this was the last straw for months. Oh, this was from McGrank. This was the last straw for months. I had endured this grandmother's harassment. For months, I had asked her to stop being a bitch in the most polite manner possible. And for months, Nat Shepard just chuckled at her constant mockery of me. I had long forgotten long forgotten plora's warning of this sinister behavior and become safe in the cock twisters my lips tighten as i listen to nat shep's chuckle <laughs> and quill trying his best to tell mcgrank to just shut up and listen to the tactics i held my push to talk button so hard the first time i had pressed it in so long and my fingertip i'm sure went white and I spoke up. At least I'm not sucking that Shep's dick for loot. Boo. Boo. That's your first line. Don't do it, says Luna. Don't do it. <clears throat> Team speak went silent. I slowly realized I had made a huge mistake. I had the most obvious female voice on the planet. There was no way I was getting around for this. My secret was out. And after some minutes, Nat Shep broke the silence. Damn, you're a girl? And she owned your ass. I like Nat Shep. <laughs> he's good. He's got a 60-year-old poon on the hook. <laughs> and then he's popping off with some bants. I like him. Team speak filled with laughter and what sounded like clapping. McGrank didn't say a word the rest of the run as we stopped at Old Traxian after the fifth wipe and people left en masse for the night. When I logged on the next day, I saw that I had been promoted out of the blue to officer. Oh, what a guild. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10 guild. Invite me. I want in. <clears throat> oh, my God. Both Plura and Nelsinki explained that while I was gone, Nat Shepard promoted me after a long speech about me <laughs> being vital to the guild and showing constant effort by keeping that guild bank tidy. Yes! No, not promoted for banter. Sorted the guild bank out. You want to get promoted and promoted fast. Motherfuckers, get your ass sorted that guild bank out, dude. All the loot. All the loot, all day. Easy win. Fucking easy get. The cleaner strikes again. The cleaner, she's done it again. Everyone's just another victim. And finally putting McGrank in her place. I started to get nervous as I remembered Plura's first warning. And indeed, when Nat Shep logged on, some pink text popped up. Here he comes. Here's my boy. I always knew you were special. Boom. Here we go. Moist maker. Get ready. Get ready, girls. Pregnancy ink. Let's go. I always knew you were special. So I promoted you earlier. Enjoy the new promotion. <laughs> if you need any gold, you're free to withdraw it from the bank. I was a little stunned, but I didn't know what to do or say, so I just said, thank you. I went back to doing my dailies in Hyjal. 
or at least tried to. He was soon pestering me to join TeamSpeak so we could talk privately about officer things. <laughs> Can you join TeamSpeak? Let's talk about officer things. Just me and you. Officer things. I mean, you are an officer now, right? <clears throat> I said I was busy. I had stuff to do after the dailies, and I logged out instantly. <laughs> I wish I got in contact straight away with Plur and oh, sorry, I forget your name. Now Sinky, I'm really sorry. Asked for advice, but they were both clueless as to what to do. Now Sinky simply said, "You're fucked." <laughs> and Plur, in all of her wisdom, came up with the solid answer of, I "Told you." I stayed off for a couple of days, trying to focus on other things. When I one day logged on to the good book, only to see a friend request from a stranger. An old dude from Wales. Oh, he's fucking Welsh! Oh, no! He's in. Dumb me, hoping it was someone who would see my artwork and what a commission. What a commission. I accepted. A PM popped up almost immediately. <laughs> too smooth this one girls you're not ready <laughs> i knew you sounded hot but i never imagined this this is nat Shep, by the way the scumbag had found me while going through plura's friends list on the hunt for me as plura and a few non-family friends he had put two and two together i was stunned i told him politely that i didn't really appreciate him randomly adding me like this but he he glossed over it and started complimenting me on my drawings and other art projects. I don't like that you stalked me. Forget about that. Lovely picture. Lovely picture, actually. Really good. I like what you had done. Things got even more awkward. as I felt like I had to go along with what this now normal conversation seemed like. <laughs> at raid nights, McGrank Rignatshep kept flirting openly. As he, at the same time, was whispering me... <laughs> reminding me that I was 50 times sexier than her. You know, McGrank, you're pretty hot. But you're 50 times sexier. It's a two for one, boys. It's a two for one. It's a two for one, that one. I like it. He's doing it. And that, <laughs> he, he whispered me saying that if he could, he would do unimaginable things to me. Nice. I mean, but porn exists. I mean, like, it's hard to think of something unimaginable. <laughs> That's Most things point. have been done. There is nothing unimaginable yeah. that can be done. Like, I would never make such a bold brack. I would say I would do disgusting, filthy things to you. And I will. But unimaginable? No. Like I, I definitely chest. researched first. <laughs> I, definitely. <laughs> I definitely did some reading. <laughs> well, homework, let's call it. Unspeakable things. <laughs> Unspeakable things? But I would speak them. I would right in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'd tell you all about it. <clears throat> and I put up with it. I put up with it. Mop was soon come, would soon come out, and by then, I was used to Nat Shep flirting and uh, sexually commenting on me. I'd start, he'd started sending me dick pics on Facebook and often told me that he was thinking of me when he took it. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I mean, it's not a boner he got from someone else. And described in very vivid details what he was imagining himself doing to me. I reminded him always that he had a wife and that I was not interested in him in that way, which, of course, he glossed over, as creeps tend to do. <laughs> ah, forget all that. Look at my dick, though. McGran could start criticizing me again, now more openly because I was a girl, and that I was apparently whoring myself out for raid spots and gifts from Natship. Plora and Nelsinki had by then become avid defenders of my honor, my lady white knights, seeing as I never did it for me myself. And that shit was, of course, also denying all accusations thrown at him from McGrank. It all went to blows one evening when I had had enough. Here we go. Nat Shep had just sent me a ruby panther with a winky face and a dick emoji. Now, if you're not sure, that's an 8 equal sign equal sign 0. D. No, no D. The 0 is the head. The D is the head. Well, not according to Nat Shep, and he's a proper creeper. I mean, he's a Facebook Wait, stalker. A I don't creeper. think you're in the same league. It's a D. Mm, I don't know what we prefer. The zero or the D? Your thoughts. There's <laughs> a lot of dicks in my chat right now. <laughs> Good work, team. <laughs> Good work, team. <laughs> I screenshot it along with some... Oh, no, the evidence. I screenshot it along with some of the other things he had sent me on the Good Book. 
and posted it on the Cock Twisted's forum. All hell broke loose. He should have put his dick on it. Is it wrong to post the dick pic of a creeper on the website? No. I think that's fair game. I mean, dicks are ugly anyway. You can't identify someone by a dick. I could. No. If our dicks were in a lineup, you wouldn't tell which is mine. I'd be able to tell which one's mine. Yeah, you can identify your own dick, hopefully. I can tell which one's yours. I mean, if it was a blind taste test, I'll thank you. <laughs> are we talking visual or like a taste thing or a smell thing? <laughs> <laughs> Nat Shep asked me why I would do something like that to him. McGrank openly yelling in TeamSpeak that I was a fraud who had photoshopped a dick to crap on Nat Shep. <laughs> That's not a real dick. <laughs> Both Plora and Nelsinki were laughing their asses off and many others in the guild were making fun of Nat Shep for being a horn dog with a little dick. Doesn't matter how big your dick is. If it goes public like that, it's a little dick. <laughs> Everyone else, everyone's going to call it a little dick for days. That is when a badly photoshopped picture of me popped up on the forum. I snapped. Nat Shep had rushed a photo of some random porn star and stuck my face onto her. <laughs> you could see the edges and the colours weren't even the same. Saying that I had been forcing myself onto him. That he was just a weak... Oh, wait a minute. No, because Nat Shep was just a weak man who needed help controlling his urges. Yeah. Aren't we all fellas? We're just weak. We're weak. It's our it's not our fault, girls. You do crazy things to us. You do it to us. So in fact, we're always the victims. That's just science. <clears throat> I'm so fucking weak. <laughs> Who's sending strangers pictures of their dick? What are you doing? <laughs> Stop. Me and Elsiki and Plora have been plotting for a while to start our own guild, but it was about to become a reality. I laid it onto the man that I was disgusted that he was cheating on his wife virtually. He was working double shifts to make ends meet while he sat at home whacking his beat off to random women online with two kids. <gasps> with two kids in different rooms. I then went to the nearest guild bank and took every last penny in that bank. Oh shit, vengeance! Because I knew he used the guild bank as his personal storing space for gold. So, because he couldn't fit more gold personally on all of his characters. Wow. Nat Shep's a rich bitch. And then I quit, leaned back, closed my eyes. It was over. I started blocking his alts one by one as whispers pop up and how I had ruined his online life. And that I was responsible for all the shit that would come his way. McGrank and her alts were also slowly being blocked as she sent her own shit my way. About how I was a whore who didn't know how to treat a real man like Nat Shep. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And that I lacked respect for myself for sending Nat Shep such dirty pictures of myself. She believed the pod pick? <laughs> Some six-year-old woman online doesn't know what Photoshop is. <laughs> we sent her man to the moon? Oh my god! We landed on the moon! She's watched that Emma Watson deep face and she's like, Jesus, Emma! Hermione? No. No. Bad Hermione. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? Suck that cock. <laughs> Plora, <laughs> Plora and Helsinki were kicked from the guild. All they could do was laugh at what was going on. We went straight to Stormwind and started setting up our guild. <sighs> I spent Nat Shep's cash to set up our guild banks, even if he was still making alts to whisper me that I needed to send the cash back or he would report me. I, of course, ignored him. Me and my now two besties in the game soon had a big guild going that unfortunately died in Warlords. F. And I'm now alone and able to leave the guild that was set up as it means too much to me. Ah, leave. Go on. Find some other friends. You'll be alright. <clears throat> Plora quit the game, but we still talk about the cock twisters every now and then on the good book just for a giggle. <clears throat> and both Nelsinki and Quill have been there for me after I got ooh after I after I found out that I did have some issues two years ago, giving me support on my way to happiness. I hope this gives you a good chuckle, preacher ghost, because it's a thing that's become a thing that makes me laugh. We did have a chuckle, yes, we did. How are we doing for time? All right, I've got one more story, uh, but this is uh, if any raiders are in the chat, you're about to be super triggered. Let's go fast. Let's go fast.
Yeah, sorry, Raiders. <laughs> sorry, Raiders, the triggering is ink. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, we need a guild name. Go. Uh, we need a feral druid, which will be Tomov. We need uh, another girl. Oh my god, we need more girls on Patreon. We'll go with uh, Mailchon. I know it's a male name. Uh, we need a fella, which will be Bonaheim. We need a guild master, uh, which will be Coppard. And we need a raid leader, which will be Gange. <laughs> <laughs> the Bukaki firefighters like it. <laughs> You could tell this one was written by an RP here, Andy. Why? Look. It's all colourful and shit. <laughs> Quality. All right, then. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hello and a massive bro fist to both you, Preacher, and, of course, the Big G. What are you doing? The low five on the Duke? Share an equally glorious bro fist, that wonderful chat of yours. That's these heroes right here that will be listening as well. I am bringing you this story from the US of A, from the Biss State, California. I hope you find this bit of drama that I'm bringing to you today enjoyable. This is the story of how a feral druid and a hunter almost broke, broke apart our mythic raiding guild. My story and my drama starts at the very tail end of MOP, right before the pre-patch changed everything and brought us the new mythic difficulty. We raided on a well-known RP server of Moonguard. Yes, we have a few raiders there, not just ERPers. Looking for a new home after my last guild collapse, thanks to some drama I may be able to share in the future, I turned my sights on the Bakaki Firefighters. At that time, Bakaki Firefighters had been the top guild on Moonguard. They had only ever been dethroned once, and that was in the Throne of Thunder the tier prior. I had heard quite a few stories about the guild, favoritism and other kinds of odd remarks, but I never took things like that seriously. When I joined the guild, I was part of a small portion of new recruits that were all recruited at the same time. One of these players was a feral druid that went by the name... Oh, can't even see it now. Tomov. Hmm. At first, he was an extremely quiet individual. Oh, it's always the quiet ones, boys. He was skilled, one of the best feral druids I had ever seen. But hearing him speak was a rarity. Little did I know that he would cause one of the biggest shitstorms in this guild seen in years. There are two prominent figures in our guild. Who was... Bornaheim, the guild master, and also a god-awful warrior that somehow always retained the elite rank. Now you might ask, what is the elite rank? In the Bakaki Firefighters, we had a DKP system for loot. However, if you had the elite rank, you gained more DKP and loot priority on top of that for anything that dropped in raids. During my time there, I never saw anyone promoted to the elite rank beyond the people who were already there. Pro. <laughs> the other was Gange, our raid leader. He was a soft-spoken Canadian that probably didn't belong in the role. Before I joined, one of the hunters in the guild... Ooh, I think the hunter was... Let me make sure this is right, because I want to get the names right. Uh, okay, it's the guy. The hunter, which is Coppard... There we go. <coughs> Coppard was also an officer, but he had stepped down for reasons that I was unaware of. He was married to another hunter in the guild who went by the name of Mailchan. These were the people that would be involved in the entire story. The first, first few months in the guild were fairly uneventful. The one thing that really stuck out was the DKP system. As I mentioned before, certain members... <coughs> excuse me. Which were pretty much the guild master and his friends, had an elite rank. That would give them priority over gear, more DKP per raid, and all kinds of other benefits like free potions, free flasks, and free repairs. <laughs> we progressed quickly, pushing ourselves to heroic Garrosh, something that we were all excited for. <laughs> this fucking thing Bornaheim, the GM Quickly became known amongst most of the recruits For not being the best guildmaster He wasn't what you would call a good player But felt that he was allowed to be in every raid And of course would be the one to Post criticism on everyone else That the other officers would put towards him 
<coughs> despite him being dead for most of our progression attempts. As we started to push further and further into garish progression, There we go. <clears throat> a few of us noticed that Bornheim was getting extremely close to Mailchen. They were spending all of their free time out of raids together. They were always on voice together and always standing together, emoting to each other during raids. <coughs> Despite all this, <clears throat> her husband, Coppard, thought nothing was wrong or odd about this situation. I could have sworn he was blind. Most of us ignored it and figured the new quiet druid oh this is the druid <coughs> God. got something in my throat it's a nightmare mm. <clears throat> oh sorry a few of us noticed that there was the druid i'm bad i'm bad tom of tom of the druid and male channel are spending time together my bad <laughs> and figured that the new quiet druid was just trying his best to make new friends Garrosh was two weeks of wiping to malice in the last phase. Nobody seemed to understand it. And when it finally died, everyone cheered. But there was a small group of players behind the scenes that weren't happy regardless. At least with how the guild was being run. Oh, my throat. Uh, before you carry on, I'm chewing off Suzanne's here. Peace. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> Love and kisses. Hey, give her my cuddles. Love it, it's a birthday. Mm. You know what that means? Give him my love. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Probably going to turn you down, dude. Probably is. <clears throat> it's not my birthday after all. Wish your happy birthday for me, dude. <clears throat> the biggest problems people had in this guild, your chat could probably guess. They didn't like the elite rank. Nobody had ever been given this rank. Two, <laughs> Bornerheim and his friends always seem to be getting special treatment. And Bornheim's girlfriend was always speaking up. Seemed to be able to invite and remove people whenever she wanted and was pretty much allowed to run rampant whenever she felt like it. Behind the scenes, Coppard was planning something sinister. <coughs> Sorry about this cough, guys. I can't seem to shake it. He wanted B Bornheim gone. And wanted Gange to take Guildmaster. Figuring that Gange was a much nicer person. He figured he would try it and start a coup. Here's the plan. To shield him from Bornheim's criticisms. With Tomov... <clears throat> Ugh, I'm struggling. <coughs> With Tomov and Bornheim also riding behind him, it seemed like their plan wouldn't fail. Coppard, Coppard made Gange create a post on the forums. In a public setting, we're going to take it to the forums. We're going to make a public forum. Asking raiders for their opinions on how they felt our Siege of Ogrimmar tier went. The first person to post was Tomov, who was pretty much going to be the scapegoat. I later came out to find out that Mailchan had practically begged him to do this. Right after this, Coppard and Mailchan made their posts. Instead of being productive posts or well thought out posts, however, they were posts that directly shit-talked Bornerheim for being a piece of shit and a waste of a raid spot. They also attacked his girlfriend, saying she had too many privileges. I have a bit of a post for your own reading pleasure that you can find from when his girlfriend replied. Now, <coughs> I'm going to read this to you. He sent me a screenshot. Of his, so, to be clear, because I was coughing. They're trying to get rid of the GM. So they've, they've staged this forum post... For them to hammer the GM so he'll fucking leave, right? And in it, they shit on the GM's girlfriend. She's unnamed, but the screenshot I have here is the girlfriend's reply, okay? This, my friends, is why you don't take these situations to a, fo a forum. Yeah. Are you ready? <clears throat> I want to just point out <laughs> that the forum name of this girl, which I can't read because it's a real name, obviously... She's given herself a title. So think of it as something like The Wise. <laughs> Alright, here we go. No. I'm afraid this is where you're mistaken. This has nothing to do with any sort of relationship with... <laughs> with... Ba what was it? Bornerheim. He's the GM. Or any of the officers. I founded this guild. And became an officer in my own right without the benefit of a relationship with anyone. I have been here for a long time, 
and have known the people involved for a long time. And my insights are my own. Now, someone in the forum post above this had put, uh, had called her out and said, if you cared enough to keep the benefits, this is because they want to get rid of this elitist rank, then why do you only help when it's convenient for you? Her reply, I don't understand this question, nor do I understand how anything I've done should look out of line to a newer raider. I bought and scheduled my Garrosh kill just as everyone else in our non-raiding core did. I don't know what that's about. And all I've done in this discussion until this morning is to ask people to stop telling stories and ignoring Gan's request for civility. I would not have made those posts without being convinced that they were twisting the truth and being subversive. I'm on a pretty even keel, but I am not going to let people get away with that level of disrespect and deceit in what is supposed to be a productive discussion. It's derailing the discussion, and it is not fair to everyone who has a legitimate concern. Parentheses. Some of their concerns were legitimate, to be fair, but they do themselves no favours weaving in lies and insults and their actual concerns get lost in the middle. I requested to be present in the officer meeting last night because I had known Coppard for several years, served as an officer alongside him, and was directly involved in at least one relevant recent situation with him. I offered my insight as well as my concern for the situation and his well-being, since I think this issue is a bit more personal than he'd have you think. Several non-officers were pulled into the chat throughout the night, including Coppard, who requested an officer audience himself. <coughs> I don't claim to know what goes on in all the raids. My issues are more with the ranking system, which has been a thorn in my side ever since we developed it, and how it's affecting the current raiders. You asked how I can present a fair opinion on the situation, which I haven't personally been in raid, which is fair. Please realize that I have insight into these situations that others may lack. <clears throat> Bornaheim isn't my only source of information. I talk to officers and raiders alike. I have heard the officers say one thing and they see it twisted around into something barely recognizable by Coppard or Mel Melchon. Melchon. I have heard and seen firsthand the problems they cause and the way they have acted towards officers and fellow members. Things that would be out of line anywhere, much less a raiding environment where everyone is supposed to be friendly. They are lying and being subversive, and this is not the first time it has happened. I have observed their recent interactions with Baleron, and I don't feel out of line saying that I think they're being vindictive rather than acting on logic and things that actually happened. I'm sorry if this post is disjointed, but I am rushing. You fucking lie. The level of uninformed hostility in some of these posts is really uncalled for. Ganj intended this thread to be a place to foster change within the guild, and we've had some good suggestions so far from various members, and I don't want to lose sight of those goals. Okay, <coughs> this is what you call getting fucking owned when you try to take down a guild. Especially when you're a newer member of the guild and don't really understand the history of the guild. This is about as severely fucked as you can get. You can bend over so many times, lube yourself up nicely, but there is rarely, rarely a bigger dick that's going to jump into your butthole than a post like this, because you just got fucked. You just got fucked. Absolutely fucked. Because you thought it was just the GM's girlfriend. GM's girlfriend's seriously old school, ex-officer, ex-raider, and talks to fucking everybody. And saw straight through the bullshit. <laughs> this is that is a fucking public butt rape. If you've ever seen people try and bring down a guild, this is what fucking kills it straight away. Because somebody very politely to the point, and then I, the only line here is, "I rushed to this post, my fucking ass." Unless you are George R. R. Martin's daughter, no, you didn't. This is like so well worded and brutal as fuck. Because you just got absolutely wrecked. I love this post so fucking much that I would I would clap this shit. <laughs> I would clap this shit. Because these guys who try to take down this guild just got fucking owned so hard. <clears throat> because of how badly things went after this post, Coppard, <laughs> Coppard and Mailchan were both immediately kicked for trying to wreck the guild. They hadn't even gotten their plan off the ground. Before both of them were requested to leave the guild, Nothing changed. And while I wasn't happy with the guild myself, I stayed. Tomov also stayed, much to 
Bornaheim, surprise. It seemed like things were finally going to calm down and nothing else would come from this. Yeah, that's the bot. You just got kicked. The two people who started it just got fucking kicked. No, get out. <laughs> the post that Ganj made was an absolute waste of time. And feeling used by the Hunter duo, he stepped down from raiding. Mm. Things were quiet for a couple of weeks. Tomov was rarely online outside of raid time. And I knew from conversations with him that he would play games with... Fuck me, these two names. Mailchan. While they chatted on Skype. I soon found out that these weren't just short chats. They were having 20 hour long Skype calls. Where they even fell asleep together on voice. It didn't take much thought to put two and two together. The hunter had tamed the feral druid. And he was falling madly in love with her. Despite her being married and living with Coppard. It didn't take long for Tomov to start requesting that Mailchan be allowed back in the guild. This never happened. But we did get some interesting news a week later. Coppard had caught a chat log from the two that showed that they had been flirting. They weren't just flirting either. Ladies and gentlemen, they were ERPing. They were even doing it during raids, in between boss pulls, and nobody was the wiser. It was at this time that I was in shock that Coppard had somehow never noticed any of this. How could this woman get away with ERPing with someone else while they were in the same house, in the same room, during the same raid? When Coppard found out, he completely barred Mailchan from chatting with Tomov. He started confiding in me. Telling me how much he loved her. How much he wanted to save her from that relationship that she had gotten herself involved in. I actually felt kind of bad for him. The two of them went a, cu went a couple of weeks with being unable to talk. But I always saw Tomov in the same zones as Mailchan. I don't know if he was stalking her, following her, or just being creepy. It didn't take long for this love-struck pussy to send me a message. <laughs> Please. I need you to relay something to her. <laughs> 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 maintain focus guys i need you to relay something to her he whispered me i honestly felt bad everything he had told me showed that he loved this girl and despite my best judgment i decided i would be the middleman i would send the message i told her exactly what he told me to say he still misses you loves you he wants to run away with you take you away from that home that you're in Unfortunately for me, Coppard had rearranged their room so that he had a duplicate of her screen next to his. <laughs> Who's living like this? What are you doing? Stop! Stop it! Oh! <laughs> to stop doing that <clears throat> he saw the message when I sent it this caused them to get into a row Coppard removed me from everything in a way this stung preacher I had done challenge mode carries with Coppard I helped keep his coffers filled and we did a lot of good things together I had fucked up and I had done so royally all in the name of forbidden love as it kept being referred to ah forbidden love Love that I knew was wrong. It seemed like things would end there. I didn't hear word from any of them for a couple of weeks, and we continued raiding, doing our weekly siege clears. However, the silence was short-lived. About three weeks, I got another message from Tomov. Mailchan had been in contact behind the scenes when her husband was at work or at church. He shared some of those messages with me. It was honestly some of the cringiest shit I had ever read. I screenshotted them, and they are now here for you to read. Are you ready? <laughs> we have the screenshots. Here we go. <clears throat> so, these are the screenshots between Tomov, <clears throat> our boy Tomov, and our girl Mailchan. We're going to open with Tomov. Please, Mailchan, just try to forget. I will never forget my promises to you. Don't worry, I won't kill myself. I'll keep myself alive for you. He has church on Sunday. If you're around, I'll be able to talk then. I love you. I will not forget about you. I'm sorry, Mailchan. 
I love you so much, but please, just try for now. Please forget me. This is for your own good, honey bear. Please, Tomov, I need you. This is ripping me apart. I need you too, Mail-chan. It's just so hard to talk to you while you're in the house, knowing that I can't have you, smell you, touch you. The only reason I'm in this house is because I still believe in you. I feel like I'll die here with you. I'm sorry. I just love you so much. Please, honey bear, just try to forget about me for now. I don't want you hurting. Doing this is going to make it so much harder on you. Talking to me is just going to make the pain worse. I refuse. But if you get caught, who knows what will happen. <sighs> That's the end. I don't know what to say, Preacher. Both of them seem delusional or like something was wrong with them. I heard that Coppard could be a bit of a twat, but I had no clue how deep it was. I just kind of read the messages and let the two try to handle things by themselves. Eventually, I received word that Mail Chan was going back home to live with her mother. I think Tomov had won. They were both going to get what they wanted. I lost contact with them for the longest time after that, and we continued clearing siege until Prepatch introduced Mythic, and then into Warlords, where Tomov left the guild to go back to his old server. I did hear some mention every now and then, however, from people who stayed with the Bakaki firefighters. It's turned out. And I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> it turned out Tomov and Mailchan were never meant to be. It never worked out for them. That's awful. Thanks, buddy. That is the end. Honey Bear never... It never worked out for Honey Bear. It never worked out for Honey Bear. Why? Why Honey Bear? Honey, honey Bear loves Male Chan. Male Chan loves Honey Bear. Are you a Honey Bear? I'll be a Honey Bear for you, buddy, any day. Can I be your Honey Bear? Yeah. Yes. High five. Boom! Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of drama for now. But my waifu is finally going to get her chance to be back on stream and say hello to all her friends. Yeah, we have tram swimming, so don't expect anything exciting. Yeah, about half eight-ish, something like that. About half eight-ish. Around that time. I'll be wet still, so... <laughs> what? I'll what? make sure of that. High five. High five. No. <laughs> so we'll be everyone will be back later i'm going to take it easy and rest my throat after that drama time uh but from the pg family say bye-bye bye-bye give it a wave you gotta wave at the camera do bye -bye. a bow Max. take a bow don't bow you didn't do nothing it's daddy show daddy show from the whole pg team have a wonderful weekend do something cool i might try and be around tomorrow night for battle for azeroth but i'll see if i can make it work love you all thank you for it Say bye bye, James. I'm gonna do it. Bye bye. I'm gonna do a bye bye. Go on, then. You did a bow. You weren't <laughs> supposed to do a bow. You cheated. <laughs> bye bye, everybody.